Let's pray before we get started here today. Father, thank you for, for being so good to us and loving us and uh, giving us your glory. And, and that we would, we would love you more every day. Help us today to help me to present this message the right way and help everyone that hears us to, that it might be a blessing to their heart, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. <clears throat> well, as you guys get put up to every year, is you got to listen to one of my stories. Nobody else wants to hear them, so I, I guess I got to bring them here because I kind of got a trapped audience. So, um, as you know, we own, I own a golf course down the road here. And, uh, and every once in a while, we've been there for 40 years. I was like eight years old when we started. So I hear these little stories here and there, and uh, uh, so I've been writing them down as people tell me about them. So it, it, the old the old tea box, the first tea box, is about from this wall to this wall from the clubhouse, and in between there's golf carts and people are mulling around in that area, and uh, so it makes it kind of stressful for the the guy teeing off to hit because he's got all these people watching him. So this, this guy brought this one up to me the other day. He, he said uh, he was there one time and, and he was coming up next. Oh, I forgot the kicker. The kicker was back in those times, one of us would stand out on the tee box and uh, would try to keep the flow going of the course, try to keep everybody teeing off. Um, so it happened to be my dad. And my dad, he was kind of one of these guys that would give you a lot of trouble, in, in a good way. But he had a lot of fun with it. So so this this guy, is, he's about to get up, and, and he sees another guy tee off. And sure enough, this guy takes his giant divot, this grass goes just all over the place. And my dad gives this smart retort, I guess I'm gonna have to give you a bag of seed to take around the golf course with you. <laughs> so, so this guy's really scared. Sure enough, he gets up there and he shanks the ball. And the shank is basically, it goes straight up from your club. And um, well, our backyard was up there, okay? Now in the backyard, there's a thousand gallon propane tank, which when you hit that propane tank, it, it does a big gong, so everybody around can see that you just <laughs> messed up and hit a bad shot. Well, this guy missed the propane tank, and he hit our kitchen window of our house, <laughs> broke the glass, all the glass went all, all over the inside of the house, inside the kitchen, the ball goes inside. And he's thinking, oh, man. He's at a split second, he's like, I gotta come back, I gotta do a comeback before Larry just ridicules me. So he says, he says, oh boy, I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> he turns to my dad and he says, Larry, do I get a free drop or you don't want me to hear it where it lies? <laughs> and I, I, I think my dad was dumbfounded on that one, so. <laughs> okay. Um, I, as, I, as I said earlier when I was praying, it, this, is, this is an odd message. And I, I, let, let me give you the, the roundabout. I, in the summertime, when I'm doing work on the golf course, <clears throat> I'll, I'll have these headphones on, you know, to kind of drown out the noise. And then I've got an iPod, and I usually listen to podcasts. I listen to them twice over, something like that. And after so many hours, your brain kind of turns to mush, and you... Nothing's going in. So I turn to a playlist of some songs. And I'm, as I'm listening to these songs, this one verse of this one song keeps hitting me. And um, as you know, if, if I do this once a year, what am I going to talk about in God's Word? You know, you, you can talk about, I could talk a whole hour on one verse. So where do we go? I have no idea. So I'm like, Lord, 
you've got to give me the idea here. I, I don't have a clue. And, and then he popped my brain back to thinking about this one verse. And it's, <laughs> it, is for, it is the theme of Rocky. It's called, <clears throat> it's called the Eye of the Tiger. And in this song, there's one verse. And you can, you can put it up here if you want. It says, so many times it happens too fast, you trade your passion for glory. So many times it happens too fast, you trade your passion for glory. And it just kept hitting me. And, and as I started doing my everyday life, I started noticing things a little bit. Um, so we'll, we'll define passion. Passion is an intense or overpowering emotion to something or someone. And I, I kind of smushed it down. I said a true inward and outward love. And then glory is defined as a distinguished honor or praise or exalted reputation. So today, what I'm looking at is, is glory being a self-distinguished honor or praise or a self-exalted reputation. Okay, and it runs very parallel with pride. <clears throat> and, and I'm going to give you an uh, example in our culture is uh, Joe Kennedy Sr. This guy was uh, JFK, our president, was his uh, father. Uh, his other son was Bobby Kennedy. His other son was Teddy Kennedy. Uh, he was a senator from Massachusetts for years. But Joe Kennedy Sr., had a daughter, her name was Rosemary, and she was 23 years old, she was a beautiful girl, she was vibrant, she loved life, she had one little, one little thing, and her thing was she had a mentality of a 15 year old, and he noticed that she was becoming promiscuous, and he was kind of scared that she was going to become pregnant or get a disease, and maybe disgrace the family. <clears throat> So when, when her mother, his wife, her mother was on vacation, he had her taken in for a lobotomy, the first ever of its kind, for someone just being a little slow in life. Well, a, a lobotomy is where you actually cut brain tissue. And it was failed, and she became incapacitated and institutionalized, and she died at 86 in, in 05. Joe Kennedy Sr., his passion was for his daughter, Rosemary. But he traded it for glory. He traded it for reputation of the family, notoriety, and power. There's a, there's a um, reality TV show out there right now. It's called Family Jewels. And... This show is about Gene Simmons. He is a uh, rock star from the group called Kiss. And he has lived with a lady. He hasn't been married to her. Her name is Shannon Tweed for 25 years. They have two kids now that are, that are in their low 20s. And he got caught in uh, some pictures with some groupies about a year ago. Well, Shannon left him. And the kids, they've always idolized their dad. And now they're starting to see behind his curtain what he's got going on, really. Well, with his life falling apart, he started, he's even started seeing a counselor to anything to get Shannon back. And, and then, on top of it, he finally got to where he actually asked her to marry, marry her after 25 years. And you would think she'd be ecstatic, but she was mad at him because why now? Why not 25 years ago? Why not two years ago? Gene Simmons, his passion is for his kids and, and Shannon. I think he did finally marry her now. His passion is for them, but he traded that passion for pleasures and popularity. So many times it happens too fast. You trade your passion for glory. Uh, American Choppers, I don't know if some guys watch this. Uh, Paul Tuttle Sr., Paul Tuttle Jr., 
and Mikey. These guys put the, together these awesome looking uh, motorcycles, these awesome looking choppers. Well, these guys had a falling out a couple years ago, the dad and the two sons, and they separated. And they are competitors now, because Junior started a, a, um, his own company, and it's kind of sad you, you hear some trash talking. And most of the time, the trash is coming from the father to the son. And you know, there was one, one episode that I saw that Senior actually, he had, a, he had a dog that he loved a lot, and, and I saw him, he had to put the dog down finally, and he cried for that dog, but I'd never seen him cry for his sons. Paul Tuttle Senior, his passion for his family, but he traded, his, traded that for glory in his own attitude, his own control, his own popularity and notoriety. So many times it happens too fast. You trade your passion for glory. <clears throat> now I've got, I've got another thing coming up here, but, but I wanted to put, put a parenthesis around this. This is what I came up with, all right? I, this is not a verse in scripture. Um, it's just something that came to me just a few days ago, and I, I wanted to write to, to put it in perspective. And, and it's number three, if you guys can show it. Oh, there it is. It says, glory is, a, is only a commodity that can't be bought or sold, only given or taken by God. And all glory should be reserved just for God himself. So when we decide to trade what should be our passion for self-exalted reputation or glory, we take it, we steal it, or we skim it from God. And in turn, that's why I call this message Glory Skimmers. And Wendy, I appreciate the job you did on this. These guys look good, man. They, they look pretty awesome. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna give you an example. I've, I've got a lot of bills here. And um, I don't know, the, the old Las Vegas gangster mobster thing just came to, to mind. But uh, in these bills, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna, this is, uh, Bugsy owns a casino, all right? Bugsy owns a casino, and so it's his money. Now, we've got Rocco that runs a casino for him. So Rocco, takes care of everything and he takes care of the money too. He takes care of Bugsy's money. Now, Rocco, he's thinking, man, that's a pretty thick pile of, of cash there. You know, I worked pretty hard last week. I spent some extra hours. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I might just take a couple, a few of these off of there and stuff them in my pocket. Look at that, that, that stack is still pretty thick. Bugsy will never notice the difference. Well, time goes on, he keeps doing this a little bit of time, and Bugsy notices that Rocco has got him some new suits. And Rocco just bought him a convertible caddy, convertible Cadillac. So Bugsy just thinks, man, that Rocco, he's, he's doing it up big. He just, so he decides, he says, you know, I think I'm gonna buy Rocco a new pair of shoes and I'm gonna take him fishing. But those shoes are made out of concrete and Rocco's gonna be the sinker if, I know, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and as believers, sorry, getting ahead of myself here. As believers, I think we fall into a trap of skimming some of God's glory. Our passion should be for Christ, Christ only never failing. But so many times, it happens too fast, we trade our passion for glory. And I'm gonna give you my personal example. I've studied God's word quite a bit. And I, in my Bible, I've, I've, got, I've got underlined, I, got, I, I use that for my notebook. All right, I underline passages, I highlight things, circle things, write in it, the whole works. 
But I caught myself one time. And I caught myself wanting someone else to see what I had done in here. And I'm like, what, what did I, what, what am I doing? Am I wanting somebody to think I'm really spiritual or really special or something like that? And deep down, I guess I wanted some notoriety. But I was skimming God's glory. I wanted it for myself. But then I got thinking, you know, he's the one that gave me life. He's the one that brought me to Christ. He's the one that changed my heart. And he's the one that helped me understand the scriptures in the first place. He is the one. But it happened so fast. Trade your passion for glory. So what do we skim? And these are, again, this isn't a verse in the Bible. This is off the top of my head. What do we skim? Uh, A. We got A up there, guys, on four. Control or power? Follow me or my agenda. B. Notoriety? Popularity? Attitude? Or a higher order? Puffed up, puffed up, puffed upness in ourselves? I get a kick out of this TV show. It's, I don't know if you guys have heard of it. It's, it's a British uh, TV show. It's uh, called Keeping Up With Airs or Keeping Up Airs. It's with the lady, her name's, her name's Mrs. Bucket. <laughs> okay, Miss, Mrs. Bucket? But she goes, oh no, it's Boucher. Okay, <laughs> so, <laughs> so she's wanting a higher order. She's want, you know. And, and, and the other thing, this, I don't know, this is just one that just popped in my brain. It, it is, Sometimes when you're in a, in, a, in a room of people and everybody's just like cracking up and there's, there's, there's some people, there, there's a, a couple people there that are just like not laughing at all and you think, boy, was this not that funny? Or are they trying to keep an attitude? Are they trying to keep an higher, a higher order? Sometimes I like to pay them just to see them belly laugh, it'd be funny. Or C, money or possessions. I've got a great passion for this. Wait a second, it's going to cost me money? I got it. Oh, wait, wait a second. Maybe I'm not so passionate for it after all. Or D, it might be pleasures or feelings. I want that feeling back that God gave me when. I know sometimes people are striving for that perfect feeling. And E might be just plain old entitlement. God owes me. And God owes us nothing. Nothing at all. The big goose egg. So let's go to the scriptures. We'll, we'll, we'll hit a couple, couple of these. Uh, Adam and Eve, <clears throat> their passion was for God. But then when the serpent said, you can be like God, they skimmed a little bit of glory. They thought, well, we'd be just like God. Cool. Uh, Abram and Sarah, uh, their passion was for, for trusting God. But when they waited so long and they didn't, didn't receive a child, they did it on their own. They got Sarah's maidservant and had Ishmael. And then David, you know David's the one God said, David's after my own heart. And, and everybody would think was Bathsheba, but, but this, is, this is kind of a neater one, I think. If you remember, Saul was chasing David because Saul knew that David was going to take over the kingdom from him, and Saul was trying to kill him. So there was one time when, when Saul went to this cave to go to the restroom, and David was at that cave, and David came up behind him, and he was going to kill him. And for some reason, he cut off just a little bit of, of Saul's robe without Saul knowing it. And right when he cut that cloth, he, he started to pull. He was going to kill him and make himself king. 
But as soon as he cut that cloth, he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Who am I to raise my hand against God's anointed? And he put it back. He was trying to skim some glory, and he put it back. And he said, God, I'm going to let you take care of when, when it's your time, then I'm there for you. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar, if you remember any of those stories, Nebuchadnezzar, he, he was eating, he, he glorified himself at, at his kingdom and what I built and all that. And he ended up eating grass like a wild animal. He had a, the mind of a wild animal for, for years. And then uh, Herod, when uh, the people, he was, he was talking and the people said, that sounds like the voice of a god. And it said immediately, he was eaten up by worms. And now, <laughs> this is a hard one to do. I was thinking about Tim Tebow the other day. And I'm like, well, how do I put this into my message? Because I don't know whether they're going to win or lose. Well, they got, they got beat pretty badly last night. But, but it's so exciting to see. And I watched him after the game was over last night. And, and he said, he said, the ends aren't football. He said, the ends are, it puts me on a platform where I can do stuff. Uh, he just met with some, with a boy, I think, in a hospital and, and some kids in a hospital and that. But he said, it gives me a platform for that. And, and what, what, I, what I picture with Tebow is God, God is actually peeling off glory to Tebow. He peels glory to Tebow. He keeps giving it to him. You know, you look at some of the games that they've won, you know, in football, and what does Tebow do? He gives it right back to God. And that's how we should, that's how we should live our lives. So now I, this is, I'm, I am talking, we're going to switch gears, and I'm going to talk to the person that does not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And I picture, I picture this person as having the whole lot of glory. Because, what's that one song? It's my life. I can do whatever I want with it. So I see them as grabbing the whole lot of glory for themselves. And then, and then I see the religious person. And I see the religious person as holding the glory and sparingly giving it back to God. Here you go, God. And, and look at me here. I'm... Watch me, I, I went to church today, you know. I, I gave something to somebody. There you go, that's good enough for you. Trying to earn God's favor. And, and I, I could go through a ton, ton of them, but I, I know we want to get out of here today. So, so the next one I'm, I'm I was looking at was, is a scholar. The genius, you know, we see some of these people that are geniuses or, and, and I know some are believers, but there are some that they've gotten a, a great mind from God. They've gotten a mind that understands things quickly, um, uh, deep things. They can remember things awesomely. Um, just what God has given them. And they turn and they relish in it. They relish in it. They say, this is mine, this is mine, this is, I'm so smart, I'm so smart. And they love to show it off. I'm so smart, uh, you need to follow me, because I am really smart, and I really know some stuff. Follow me. But you know, God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. Do you know the most foolish one ever according to the world standards? It was Jesus. For when the Father asked him to come to this earth and become a man and then be humiliated and die on a cross, I want you to see this. Do you see Jesus? He traded his glory for passion. He threw his glory away to come to, to come to save us. So who are you going to follow? 
You're going to follow one who steals glory or the one who gave it away for you? And this is to the one that wants to know Jesus personally. Look inside, look down deep inside of you and pray this with me. Repeat these words. I know about you, Jesus, but I don't know you personally. I'm not worthy of anything. Come into my life and change me. I want to be able to call you father or daddy. I want you to live in me forever. And then to the ones that do know Jesus personally, that we have a personal relationship with him. Oh, Lord, look inside me. Show me if I have skimmed your glory. I truly want to have a passion never failing for you. Give me a real never-ending loyalty to, loyalty to you. Thank you so much for your passion to me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.